Okay, so now I will finally reveal the physics, the secret, why this works. Um, why this trick works really revolves around the concept of something called center of mass, or you could think of it in terms of rotational equilibrium or net torque being zero. So what does that all mean? Let me get this out of the way for a minute. Just put this on the side, we'll come back to that. And let's look at just a plain old fork. There's nothing special about this fork. It's pretty standard. Hopefully my wife doesn't mind. But the, uh, the fork is bent like so. Uh, if you notice, it's got tongs at the end, which make it kind of heavy on this side, but they actually widen this end, which helps balance it out. Every rigid body has a center of mass. The center of mass is a point at which you can pretend all of the mass is acting, or should be acted on by a force at that one point. That's the center of mass. And the easiest way to find that is to balance the object. Objects always balance on their center of mass. I could, I could do it on my finger, but I think it'll show a little bit better if I put it on this ruler that's on edge. Like the rest of you may be on edge, trying to find out how this trick works. It is a precarious situation. Let it go right there. It is just balancing on that fork. You can see I can pass this underneath here. I can pass this underneath here. That point is the center of mass. It happens to be dead center in this uh, fork, and that's because of the big end and the big end at this end like we talked about. Uh, it doesn't have to be at the end. Some forks aren't, but I, I suspect it has to do with making the fork feel light as you move it around. Nobody wants to eat with the heavy fork. So, for convenience, what I've done with the other forks, well, so much for moving them all at once, I put uh, a little orange piece of uh, paper there to help show where the center of mass is, and that will come in handy in a few minutes. Uh, what I'd like to do now is show you another demonstration related to center of mass and torque here. And what I've done is I've labeled some masses from 100 grams all the way up to 1,000 grams. Hello. This is apparently what I look like. Uh, but I have these positions uh, marked. I have a thousand gram mass here and I can control the position at which I hang the mass and obviously which mass I hang from here. So right now I have a thousand grams at the one centimeter mark and I'm going to balance that. First I'm going to balance it using a 500 gram mass. So I'll put this up here. and I'm going to do that by putting it at two centimeters. And at two centimeters, you can see those are in what's known as rotational equilibrium. The rod is not moving. So if you notice, the 1,000 gram mass is twice as far away, or I should say half as far away, as the 500 gram mass. Well, what if I, instead of using a 500 gram mass, I was to use something a little lighter? Uh, I happen to have such a mass, 200 grams. Where am I going to put this one to exactly balance that? You guessed it, five centimeters, because this is one-fifth the mass of that. So I'm going to simply remove this, move it over to approximately five centimeters. I'm going to hang that, and miraculously we have equilibrium again. There's a relationship between the mass and really the weight force pushing down and how far away it is. Let's do one more. Let's say I was to do 100 grams. I'm going to have to put that about 10 centimeters away to balance that. What is going on here? How can this balance that? Well, it can if it's really far away. In fact, it's 10 times less massive, so it has to be 10 times as far away. This is really similar to uh, when you think about levers. Um, in terms of the math of it, if we 
could just go down here for a second. We can think about this as something called center of mass. And to calculate the position of center of mass, don't worry, we're not going to calculate anything just yet. That's the equation. The first mass, the 1,000 gram mass, you can think of as being at a position of negative 1. And a 100 gram mass being at a position of positive 10. Well, that adds up to 0. The center of mass is right above the pivot point on there. That's why it balances. So let's look at our fork again. Now, I apologize, I'm going to have to reassemble that. You may have heard it came apart. A good review, tong, tong. Put them together. Little angle, that's the trickiest part. And what I've done is with this glass, I've marked in orange where I'm going to put it. And I've tried to put a little black mark at the top of the glass so that you can see something. I'm going to put the toothpick in. Hopefully, I can get this first time. Not bad. Balance it. Well, not my best work. Let me put the forks together. Again. It works best when you get it so it's just a little snug in there. You can do it with either the first hole or the second hole, depending. Okay, and that'll work. Now, notice it's balanced, and I'm showing you uh, a vantage point from directly above because I want you to focus on the two orange pieces of paper on the arms of the fork. When you look at this and this and where the wall of the glass is, notice they always make a perfect straight line. In other words, the center of mass because remember, the center of mass of this fork is here. center of mass of this fork is here. So the center of mass of both of them is halfway between. Because of this toothpick, they're kind of turned a little bit. And that forces the center of mass this way. And it lines up with the center. No orange, orange. No orange, orange. The center of mass is over the glass. Even if I make this rotate ever so slightly, as it rotates, notice these three points stay in a line. The center of mass stays over the glass. So what's going to happen if we remove the toothpick as we did in the first video? Well, let's do it because it's fun. And then we'll talk as it burns. Remember, the center of mass depends on the mass and the position of those masses. The toothpick has a mass of less than one grams. When I put it in the balance, it didn't even register a one. The forks registered about 99 grams. So when this burns, you're really not removing that much mass. You're not shifting it by a whole lot. In a, in a minute, I'll do a calculation and show you exactly how much it's shifting. But it's, it's not enough to move it off of the glass. The center of mass stays on the glass even as this part uh, burns and goes away. Like that. Before I do the calculation, though, let me show you a, another common example of center of mass. Some of you may have seen one of these birds. It will actually balance right on my finger. Good bird, good bird. Actually, it's a bird brain. Uh, the brain's not that massive, in front of the bird. There are actually weights. If you look carefully inside of there, you can see the, the trickery. And what that does is that takes the average position of the mass and shifts it forward. So the center of mass is gonna be between here and here, so along this line, and between here and here, it's gonna be right at the beak, which lets it balance on something very small, such as my finger. Uh, it's a fun trick. This is also how high jump works. Imagine you were bent this way. If this was your head, these are your hips, these are your feet, as you go over the high jump bar, whee! Uh, that actually allows you to clear the bar without having to get your whole body, or at least your whole center of mass, over the, uh, the height. So somebody who's jumping, for example, uh, seven feet at the world-class level might only have to jump and raise their center of mass six and a half feet. That's kind of cool. 
So for those of you who are still listening and you want to see the math, I haven't scared you off yet, let's just take a second and, uh, and do that. Um, just to show you that the center of mass actually changes very, very little. So let's take the mass of the forks, which was uh, 99 grams, and let's assume that their center of mass is initially at zero, right over the center of the glass. Now, when we burn the uh, toothpick, we're only going to shift that length by half the, two pits, the toothpick's length. So, uh, let's say that's one gram, even though it's not even that much. And uh, let's say that that changes it two centimeters, which frankly, I, I don't think it changes it that much. We're gonna have to divide that by 99 grams plus one gram. That's going to give us a shift, this is zero, of two one-hundredths of a centimeter. That's 0.2 millimeters. Now just for scale, I measured the glass, and the glass is about 30 millimeters across. It's not enough to actually take it off of the, uh, the glass. There's something else I want to talk about as to why this works, and something that people always ask about is, how come it doesn't turn off? It just seems so surreal when you have the toothpick and only one end. How can it possibly stand like that? And to help you understand that, we need to talk about torques. When you have the toothpick that goes like this, it's going to try to rotate like so. As it does that, this, so this one, is going to go upwards, this one is going to go downwards. And it's in rotational equilibrium. So if this is the pivot point, it has a torque from the force going down, but that's close, so it doesn't count as much, and a torque from this one going up. So that's going to try to rotate it like this. I've actually made a very large fork. Like this. Here's my giant fork. And I will try to show you. So if it was on here like this,